Hey guys, this is Mr. Lancaster again. We're on Wednesday. We're gonna... This is Goose. He's trying to join in on the video. Anyway, so we're going to continue on with fossils. And we are. Um, He's sorry, he's distracting me. <laughs> We're gonna continue on the fossil. So let me share my screen with you. All right. Let's see here. Share computer sound. So yesterday we left off on do you think habitats have changed in other parts of the world besides Illinois? And how can you find out? Well, one thing that I want to let you guys know is if you don't have this link already, I should have told you this before, but if you go into my Google Classroom and you go onto Google Classroom and it goes here, you're gonna click on this one, like Ash the Fourth. Go up here at the top where it has classwork. This is my stream right here, but if you wanna to go to classwork and then you can go to the science part. And here are my YouTube videos that I'm gonna keep posting up. This one will be up there eventually. And then also the links to the activity. So this, right now we're on mystery one, the first link. Where can you find whales in the desert? And I'm in here, okay? Oh, whoops, I messed up, sorry. Okay, so we are here. I'm going to take this and move it over because I am right one second, I'm waiting for it. Here. Okay, so do you think uh, habitats have changed in other parts of the world, world besides Illinois? How could we find out? So how could you find out? Pause the video and take a moment and think about it. What are some ways that you think that um, you could find out? Could you, well, I don't want to give it away, <laughs> but think about it and, and you'll see. Me and Goose will be thinking with, with you. All right, let's see what Doug has to say. We learned that the habitat in Illinois has changed over time. But what about other places? Have they changed too? To figure this out, you would need to dig down into the ground to look under the surface of the earth and find fossils. Once you find fossils, consider what you see. What traits do the fossils have? Where would they have lived? Fossils can give us clues about what the habitat used to be there. Scientists have done exactly this. They've dug down into the ground in different places all over the world to see if the habitats have changed there too. Take the Sahara Desert, for example, on the continent of Africa. Today, the Sahara is one of the hottest, driest places in the world. Temperatures often stay above 100 degrees Fahrenheit for months at a time. With so little rain and such hot temperatures, almost nothing can live here. It's just sand dunes as far as the eye can see. But scientists go digging underneath that sand. And when they do, they discover amazing things. Like this, the skeleton of a giant animal. If you can't tell what it is, here's its jawbone. It's a whale. And this isn't the only one they found either. They find lots of them in the Sahara Desert. So tomorrow we're going to be reading about this, uh, an article called A Whale of a Find. Um, yeah. Whales were once common in this area, but whales swim in the ocean. They can't live in a desert. What this tells us is that this place where today there's a dry, hot desert, there was once an ocean. And that's not the only habitat that's changed. Traveling back towards North America, consider this place, the Gulf of Mexico, a habitat of salty seawater connected directly to the Atlantic Ocean. Recently, after a really big storm stirred up the water, there were some people scuba diving about 10 miles from the shore, and they discovered this. It's what's left of a forest. The storm waves were so strong 
they had torn up parts of the ocean floor. And underneath, this uncovered a bunch of fossil trees, just sitting there on the bottom of the ocean. Some of them still had roots in the ground. They're cypress trees, still found today on land, never in the ocean. So here was a case where part of an ocean was once land, in this case, a forest. As one last example, take a look at one of the most extreme habitats on Earth, Antarctica. Antarctica today is a polar habitat. Temperatures dip down to minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It's the only continent where no human beings live permanently. It's too cold. Freezing cold with not a single tree that can grow there, the only animals you might recognize are penguins and seals with thick fur. But scientists have dug down under the layer of ice into the rock beneath it. And what they found are fossils like this. It's the fossil of a tropical fern, a fern found only in jungles. Antarctica today might be a permanently frozen icy habitat, but it was once a warm tropical rainforest. So what we've seen is that it's not just Illinois where I grew up that's changed. Most places have changed habitats over time, from wet ocean to dry land, or from dry land to wet ocean. Even places we might think of as impossible to live in today, where it's freezing and everything's covered in ice, weren't always this way. Some might have been warm tropical rainforests full of life. By looking at fossils, scientists have found evidence that habitats haven't always stayed the same. Habitats have changed all over the world, which kind of makes you wonder, if you dug down in the ground where you live, what fossil creatures could you find? What hidden world of the past might be found right under your feet? Think about that. Have fun and stay curious. So, we, our question was, how do you think habitats have changed in other parts of the world? And Doug did a fantastic job explaining that. He talked about Antarctica used to be a jungle, maybe, because they found evidence of trees, all, all buried below all the ice, and how uh, in the ocean there used to be trees there. Maybe it was dry there, and maybe the land was above water. And also where he found in Illinois, where there was um, there was like sea animal fossils where there, there's no sea anywhere close to that. So it's, it's really, really, really awesome and amazing. And also what's so cool is that this is what fossils do, uh, does for us. And you can even take this a step further and you can do this for a living. So for example, This website, hold on, let me see if I can get it. So there is colleges for it and you can do this as your job. You can find fossils and it's called geology is the study of the earth and paleontology is the study of fossils. And it's so cool. You could see how, and, and you learn all types of cool things. And for example, this is Bell, Bell Lloyd College. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but they have, these are some of their classes, evolution of the earth, mineralogy, petrology, paleontology, field geology, structural geology, and just so much cool stuff. I mean, it's, it's so amazing. And you can just, you can just go and go and go with this stuff. And it's so cool. But let me take you back here. And this is what fossils do, do. They just, they help us see, oh, I know that things were here before because of this. Just kind of like, um, I know someone uh, made breakfast this morning because when I came in, I could smell it. And also when I looked over, the eggs were still in the pan when they, when it was left over. Like the little, little eggs that they didn't get all of it out. And now in a weird way, that's like a fossil, a 10 minute old fossil. <laughs> So 
they've even found on Mars, um, they think maybe there, there was life on Mars because they try to, they are, they're trying to look under the dirt and trying to see if there was anything that showed that something was living there before. It's really awesome stuff. So we're going to check out these two videos right here. Yeah. One video is they find all these fossils here in Argentina. So this bone is as tall as a grown man. It's a shin bone. The shin bone is the bone from your ankle to your knee. So my shin bone is only about a foot and I'm about six feet tall. So can you imagine something shin bone that is six feet? Day I'm six foot, I'm six foot, so that's six times longer than my shin bone. So just imagine if it was six times bigger than its shin bone, it would be 36 feet. That's taller than the school. And it eight feet long, the longest ever found. Eight feet. Oh my gosh. I was wrong. I thought it was six feet. It's eight feet. Long earlier that jackhammer the brrr, and trying to make sure that they don't go into the bones and break it because if you remember from from our slides most of the time these bones aren't bones anymore minerals and dirt and rock and other things slowly seep into the bones and then they replace it and why would they do that again because these bones are no longer bones a lot of it is dirt and that is just that has just replaced the bone um, and I have to make sure that when it rains, it doesn't wash away the bones because that dirt is no longer the, the bone and then the dirt that was on top of it, they've taken all this dirt and swept it down and now they have the bone, they don't want it to go away. So they, they made this mold around it. So that's amazing. And that'd be an awesome job to do. There's one more video I want to show you. Mark Rents is a paleontologist. That means he studies prehistoric life and fossils. We found him on the banks of a small creek that flows into the Peace River. Not exactly where you'd imagine finding prehistoric sharks. It's kind of hard to envision this as an environment once inhabited by, by ancient sharks, let alone sharks that might have been the size of two school buses. Whoa, can you imagine that? And if you picture two or three million years ago where we're sitting, was just imagine, um, I know some of y'all bus riders, the, bu the two buses that we have, they get in front and behind each other. And I just couldn't imagine a shark going from one end of the bus to the, to the other end of the second bus. That is just so crazy just to think about a shark that big. It's not a cow pasture. We'd be in about 20 feet of an ocean bay um, with creatures like this swimming over us. And the adult, Megalodon shark would be about 60 feet long and would have teeth anywhere from four to six inches in size. This one looks more dangerous than this one. It's more pointy. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Well, what happens to a perfect shark's tooth after it falls out of the jaw and tumbles for a million years? It doesn't look as the same, does it? Wow, this is, this is a shark's tooth? Yes. Oh, this is so cool. I, w I would just mistaken it for an, uh, a rock. <laughs> <laughs> So it gets like smoothed out from all the, the waves and everything. From the sand and the water and the tumbling. That's why at Venice Beach, when we were talking earlier, you find more shark's teeth that are worn. They get tumbled in the surf. And then on the whale side, oops. That's huge. Is that a tooth? That's a tooth. That's a whale tooth. Probably from a 35, 40 foot toothed whale. Turns out it wasn't only sharks and whales roaming around here a long time ago. When Florida wasn't underwater, it was home to people and to pretty big animals like mammoth. So when we're out, we don't always find complete mammoth and mastodon teeth. We find fragments of them. So what we find more often, instead of the complete tooth of a mammoth or a mastodon, and this is mastodon, are pieces of the tooth. And can you match that, where that might fit in? Looks like one of the sides of them. Correct, one of the cusps. Time to go and try our luck at finding some fossils in the river. Mr. Mark seemed to think we'd find something. Dig, 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 and sift, sift, sift. Are we ever going to find anything? We soon learn that there's a lot of detective work and patience we need when digging for clues about the past. So what if we find something? Can we keep it? In state-owned rivers like the Peace River, 
you have to have a permit to even collect these fossils. And then you're required to report to the state what you find annually, no matter what it so is. So if you find That's something like that, that then Mammoth you're required to find, you're required Mammoth to Mammoth report Mammoth. it, wow. depending on uh, the law. The size of my head and maybe then something. So you I found gold! Of, uh, well, black gold. You would have to... Uh, we may not have found gold, gold, but we did find some teeth. Such as if you found something. from the upper jaw of a gray shark. But if um, you were looking she has a lemon shark tooth, something. and then back to Cody again with a tiger shark it tooth, be yours. and a stingray grinding plate from the jaw. And let's not forget my alligator tooth. What can we learn from the past? One of the things I have learned is that extinctions happen, and they happen rapidly. In fact, something like 95% of every life form ever to live on Earth is now extinct. So I want to know what came before me so I have a better idea of what may happen after. So that's really, really, really awesome stuff. Tomorrow we're gonna leave off with a, we're gonna start off with a passage called A Whale of a Find. And we're gonna dive into people finding, finding whales in the desert. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. And I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you uh, have a good one. Bye.